So hello everyone and welcome to Vilaisa for All. Today we have young and dynamite technical engineer Ms. Tanya Sharma with us who is currently in final year of her MTech in VLSI design from PEC. She is currently doing her internship in ST Microelectronics and Physical Design. So uh, would you like to share something about you? Oh, my name is Tanya. Currently I'm doing MTech in VLSI design from Punjab Engineering College. And I have done my BTEC in electronics and communication. Okay, so starting with your brief introduction, kindly tell us about your educational background right from 12 to graduation and now currently in MTech. Uh, yes, uh, I did my 12th from Chandigarh in non-medical and after that I did my B.Tech in electronics and communication from Guru Nanak Dev University Amritsar. Then I did, I am currently doing MTech in VLSI design from Punjab Engineering College. Okay, so uh, talking about your campus life, how, how is the exposure at PEC, uh, what courses you have taken or what kinds of clubs they have? Yes, uh, exposure is very good. Uh, the good thing is we are always busy doing something, either it is assignments or projects or there are fests also occasionally. There are many clubs. I was a part of the placement club in my college. It, it was a kind of organization, I will say. So, okay. So, uh, as you mentioned, you are from the placement cell. How's the placement cell of your college? The placement cell is really good. Uh, it is named CDGC, and uh, there is very good coordination. And almost everyone in the VLSI computer science uh, got placed from MTech this time. Okay, so, so it is really uh, good. We can say that the placement is almost hundred percent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So how is your course curriculum of your MTech in VLSI? Yes, uh, there are four semesters. In the first and the second semester, uh, we have to complete our coursework. We have to complete the subjects. And the second year, that is the third and the fourth semester, it is up to us. Uh, we want to continue our thesis work over there or uh, we want to join the industry. Uh, would you so, like to tell about your projects as you mentioned about the thesis work and all? Yes, yes. Uh, I did my projects basically on the softwares which were available in my college, like Cadence is available, Xilinx is available. So my projects were basically on these two softwares. And even my pre-thesis was on this topic, uh, I mean, on this software. And I basically did projects in Verilog and uh, uh, Cadence. I built certain circuits like CMOS inverter. Uh, I built a Vedic multiplier using GDI technique. So these were my projects. Okay. Uh, what are the new skills that you opted during your MTech or what you would uh, suggest to the aspiring VLSI students? What they should know? Uh, yes, uh, basically in my MTech, I learned how to work under pressure because every time we had something to do, something to finish, deadlines to meet. And secondly, I learned the difference between what to study and what not to study. Basically, how to filter out what you have to study. And mainly approach the situation, the problem, practically. And you can, say, go deeply into the topic and understand it more better, which I was not able to do during my B.Tech. So these were the things I was able to do. Okay. Uh, so, and yes. how many product-based companies uh, since you apply and how it is and how tough it is at PEC? Uh, actually, I applied for two companies before. One was Synopsys and one was Western Digital. In Synopsys, uh, there was some problem with my resume. So, after giving that interview, I realized it and I worked on it. In Western Digital, I was able to go to the HR round, the last round, but somehow I was not selected. Then I applied for ST Microelectronics and I was selected in that. As a PEC student, see, there are many companies which come. So um, you just have to do your preparation and the company will come. You'll do it um, according to me. Okay. So, uh, so can you share a little more detail about uh, the current company you are interning with, which is STM? And what is the complete yes. procedure details about it? Uh, currently, I am a physical design intern. And see, the company is really good. The environment is really good. Uh, I have been enjoying my time over there. Uh, and uh, what was your uh, second question? Uh, 
uh, actually it was about the procedure what sort of test okay, they okay. have taken and interview uh, rounds actually there was a written test first out of which they shortlisted certain students and then there were two interview rounds and then there was one hr round uh, what after that of questions is... we can accept uh, expect in uh, technical yes, yes. interviews uh, uh, the my interview revolved around my resume like i mentioned the vending there was one project which i did on verilog vending machine so it works on fsms so they asked me about a sequence director that mm -hmm. how uh, they gave me a sequence like 1101 mealy machine sequence director after that they asked me to explain it that how i have drawn it then verilog they asked me questions uh, on verilog the topic was synchronous and asynchronous reset then they asked me certain concepts about sta first of all they asked me what is setup time and hold time i answered it then i mentioned transmission gates so they asked me what is a transmission gate then they went deeply into that topic that why are buffers used uh, when whenever we draw a diagram when we have to explain setup time and hold time there's a launch flop there's a capture flop so what is the significance of buffers so that was really deep so i mentioned one word transmission gates and they went into it then there was a uh, one question what is the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller so these were the questions it this was around my projects which i mentioned then i i had done my pre thesis on vedic multiplier so they asked me basics of a multiplier so they were trying to confuse me at certain points and they were trying to help me also so you need yeah. to know your projects very well this is what i observed uh yes. then many people don't take the resume making seriously and you and hence specially tell in your videos how it should be look like and uh, can you summarize it for our audience yeah yeah see resume uh, is very important because your interview will go around your resume i have given uh, interviews of three companies and i have observed that uh, there was some problem with my resume also but then i worked on it i wrote those projects only which i knew i wrote those skills only which i knew so only write those projects which you know very well according to me so you should properly know each and everything you are writing in your resume uh, you should take resume making very seriously i think this should be the first step of your preparation to make your resume yeah yeah i totally agree it's absolutely important uh yes. another question uh, from my side would be from your btech in ec and after worked as a research engineer what skills or things you uh, learn to get motivated to do what you are doing now actually in my btech in last semester i studied vhdl language vhdl is a language which i studied so when i was studying that i developed interest in that particular language so i researched more about it that where is it used then i came to know about vlsi so after that i studied basics of digital first because i was weak in it so i wanted to go in this line for that you need to have a uh, strong basics of digital as well as analog so gradually i was able to improve and so i entered into vlsi domain like this okay uh, so what is your job profile skills that any undergraduate btech student should need to learn to get a job the first thing is they should know uh, one coding language which is either verilog or vhdl they should be very comfortable with it secondly they should know the basics of digital very well uh, if they want to go in the digital domain and if they want to go in the analog domain they should know the basics of analog very well now what people do they try to go into the gate syllabus they try to do everything but you don't have to do everything in digital and analog there are certain topics which you need to understand and do properly so i would say basics of digital and analog and one coding language is enough uh, what were your resources like as we now search over google or uh, youtube we don't find anything like at one place yes yes see so, uh, uh, my my uh, procedure was kind of different uh, i tried to explore youtube first okay. i was able to find around 20 to 30% of the topics so after that if i had doubt in certain topic i would ask my teachers first if i was not able to clear it then i would go to some there are many websites 
so I would go to those VLSI websites and I was able to do it after a certain time or I would take help from my friends as well. So there is not a certain book which I would say that I have followed. I have basically relied upon YouTube websites and my teachers only. Yeah. But uh, if you want to go for any book, then I would say concentrate on basics of digital, any book you want. I would say pick any basic book of digital and go for it only. Other topics you can do online and in a better way. So according to you, mentors and good resources are very, very essential and to have a community where people are aspiring for VLSI so yes. that we can clear doubts and all that, like VSN. My whole class was actually preparing for it. So whenever I had any doubt, I had certain friends I had teachers, so I would go and ask them. Yeah, it's very, very great to have a community like that to discuss our doubts or things or anything. Or me, uh, meanwhile, we can also share our uh, area of interest. May, we can find some yes. common people right there. Yes, yes. With same interest, yeah. So what would you recommend if you are an aspiring MTEC student or BTEC one, uh, if you are watching this video? I would recommend you should start your preparation as early as possible uh, because I started my preparation late. So I would say you should start as early as possible your placement preparation. Secondly, you should concentrate more on your projects and basics because interviewers, whichever company it is, they ask the basics only. They go in advanced topics after they see that you're good in basics. So if you're not good in basics, then there is no use. I was also not able to answer certain questions in the interview, but my basics were very clear. So I got selected. So I would suggest only concentrate on the basics. Yeah, it is quite important to have a great, good foundation in order to go further. So do you want to say a few words to our audi audience about VLSI for all and its initiative? Yes, it's a very good initiative because when I was preparing um, for placements, I also used to watch the videos on how to prepare. So it is very good to know certain important topics from the people who have already faced that situation. So it is a very good initiative, I must say. So we are at the end of our interview. Before wrapping up the interview, could you give some motivation tips to our viewers so that after watching this, they will feel motivated to work harder? Uh, I would say that uh, you should not lose your heart if you're not selected in a particular company because I went to the last round, I went to the HR round in WD, but I was not selected. So even I got a bit demotivated, but that is not the end of the story. If you are working hard, if your basics are clear, you'll be able to clear a company for sure. So even if you are not able to achieve a certain thing early, try to stick on to it, try to work hard, more hard, so you'll get it. This is my only advice. It was a great time with you, Kanya. Uh, thank you for giving okay. us so much time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay.